Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. In this video and the next one, we're gonna look at socket programming in a Python. In the first video, which is this one, we're gonna see how we can create a simple TCP server. And in the next video, we will create a TCP client. And by doing these two, you will get a basic understanding of how socket programming works in a Python. Okay, so let's get started and create the TCP server. First of all, we have to create a Python file for the server. So I'm going to name it server.py. And then we can start by importing a socket module, which is one of the standard libraries. So you don't need to install it because it is pre installed. And then I'm going to create a variable and call it host. Then assign it to socket.get host by name. And pass the socket uh, get host name as argument to it. So what this line will do is to get the local IP address from the device that the server.py runs on it and return it. So in this case, this host will be the local IP address from this computer. Then I'm going to create another variable and call it the port and assign it to 1234. So this will be the port number that we want to listen for incoming connections on it. And it should be a digit number. Now let's create the socket object. A socket is uh, simply the endpoint of a uh, connections. And in this case, the socket object will be the endpoint for this server. So server and the socket dot socket. This socket takes two arguments. The first one is the address family. So socket if underline inet. So this means that uh, this socket is going to use uh, IP version 4. And for IP version 6, simply we need just to add 6 at the end of inet. But we're going to use the IP version 4. So I'm going to leave it as it is. The second argument is the type of, server, uh, type of socket. So socket.soc uh, on the line stream. This means that uh, this uh, socket is going to use the TCP as the default uh, protocol. And for UDP, we can just change it to DGRAM. So SOC on the line DGRAM. But uh, we're going to create a TCP server. So I'm going to change it to a stream again. So this is our uh, socket. Now let's uh, bind it to our IP address and the port number that we want to listen on, on it. So we can do it by typing uh, server.bind and this bind method takes a tuple as argument and this tuple will be the IP address and the port number that we want to listen on it. Now the socket is bound to an IP address and a port number. We can listen for incoming connections by using a listen method. And then I'm going to print server is running on this IP address and this port number. So we know that server is running and listening correctly. When we are listening for connections, we can accept one by using the accept method. And this accept method will return a tuple which contains a socket object. So this socket object will be for client that connected. And by using this, we can send and receive data from client. The second uh, item will be a tuple. And this tuple contains the IP address and the port number of client that connected. After that, I'm going to print got a new connection from and as I said, this uh, this address is a tuple and the first item in this tuple will be the IP address from client and the second item will be the port number. We are printing this line because we want to know who is connected to the server. And now I'm going to send a message to the client so the client know that the connection was established successfully. We can send data to client by using send method. 
And as you noticed, I'm using the same socket that we got from this accept method. So for sending and receiving data from a client, we have to use this socket. Now all we have to do is to pass the message that we want to send as argument to this send method. So I can type you connected successfully to server. But over network, we can just send bytes and not a string or other type of data. Therefore, we have to convert this string to bytes. We can do it by using the encode method. So we are going to encode this uh, string to bytes by using the UTF-8 format. Right now in this program, we can just send and receive data at the same time. Therefore, we're going to use threading. So we will create a function which will uh, constantly receive data from client. And then we are going to use threading to run this function in a separate thread. So for that, first we need to import from uh, threading the thread. And then I'm going to create a variable and call it receive thread. So this will be our thread and assign it to thread. And then the target will be receiving MSG for message. So this target is the function that we want to be run in a separate thread. So we didn't create this function yet, but we are going to create it after this thread. This function will take argument. So args equal and the argument will be this uh, connection. Then we can start it by using uh, start method. Now let's create this uh, receiving message function. And it, the argument will be called the connection. Then I'm going to create a while loop. And create a variable called msg for message and uh, then we can receive data from client by using RECV, which stands for uh, receive. And then we have to specify the buffer size. So how many bytes we want to receive. So for now, I'm going to take uh, 1024. Then because this, uh, this data is in a byte, we have to convert it to strings by using decode method and we have to use the same format as we did in a encoding then we're gonna check if is there any message we want to print it okay so now we are able to receiving data without doing anything so this function will be run in a separate thread when we store this uh, thread this function will be run and because we have a while loop here these codes will be run forever so here we are receiving a data or message and then we're gonna check if uh, is there any message and if it is we will print it okay for sending data or sending message I'm gonna create another while loop and this while loop should be in the main thread then I'm going to create a variable called msg and assign it to server at sign and the space. So this simply determines who is sending the message. And then I'm going to add to it the input statement. So this is the message itself, which we are getting it from uh, user. Then I can send the message to the client by using send method so message and uh, and of course we have to encode it so utf8 okay uh, i think we are done with the server uh, so we are able to receiving and uh, sending data at the same time now all we have to do is to create the client one which we are going to do in the next video as i said in the beginning Okay guys, that was for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. So, see you in the next video.